So hi, Hold the Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with I'm Nick from Dreamers. And we're asking some questions today about their new EP, Wallow in it. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to it so far? Thank you. I feel amazing, man. It's been a weird um few years, you know, with pandemic and all this stuff, and now it feels like we're back. I don't know. We're playing shows, we're seeing uh people reacting to stuff and just doing our thing in like a a new and improved way hell yeah hell well yeah. the ep rocks oh yeah Thanks. dude ep so catchy I, it had me getting up oh. and dancing it was crazy <laughs> hell yeah i appreciate it that's all i ever wanted hell yeah it was for uh, so... you to dance <laughs> you specifically glory <laughs> me specifically <laughs> hell yeah. yeah uh so is there any meaning behind the ep title or cover art yeah um <clears throat> Well, it's kind of a it's kind of a pandemic song and a pandemic album. Uh, the song "Wallow in It," which is the also the title of the EP, is just about like you know being in yourself and dwelling in your own like universe, kind of a solitude thing. But it's actually a, sort of a positive spin on it. Like sometimes I feel like I just want to wallow in it. Like I don't want to be cheered up by someone if I'm feeling bad. Sometimes you just want to listen to a sad song or just kind of yeah. like soak in it somehow so that that's kind of what that song is about and the uh the artwork actually generated uh on an ai thing so it's kind of like a uh yeah just sort of a weird ai generation of like a lonely bedroom with like tangled cords and cables everywhere it's kind of just about living in this weird uh dystopian future where it's our only friends are um devices Wow. And with that meaning, it's like, it's cool that you wound up embracing AI to kind of bring all of that together. Yeah. Yeah. I've been writing a lot about that, about technology and about futurism and stuff. I've always been into sci-fi and I just think like, the, I don't know, the arrival of AI is just a really weird and strange one that's uh, going to have crazy repercussions that I'm both like in awe of and interested in and also like scared of in a weird way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I'm at with it too. I've been trying to stay away from it like as much as possible because I don't want to yeah. feed into it, but it, it feels inevitable at this point mm -hmm. that it's just going to become part of the day-to-day -day life. Yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good instinct to avoid trends. It's definitely trending right now. But uh, yeah, I, I just think that there's this like interview with David Bowie in the 90s where they're talking about the arrival of the internet. And the interviewer is like, are you like, it's just a tool, right? It's not anything that crazy. And Bowie's like, no, 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 it's an alien life form. <laughs> And it's going to completely change everything and stuff. I think that applies to AI. I think that's like just as big of an arrival as that. I mean, it's going to change the way we interact with all forms of media, at least, and potentially all forms of information, which is just going to be so weird and interesting um, in ways that we can't predict. You know, absolutely. For sure. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for the CP? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just write a lot. I write all the time. I have, uh, you know, different producer friends in L.A. that I write with and other artist friends. And we just kind of all try to write as much as possible with each other. We'll set up days like, wait, we've never written together. Let's write something. And um, yeah, just kind of mix it up, kind of uh, pick out the gems. You know, I write a lot of stuff that doesn't come out right or sounds weird. Mm -hmm. And just try to write a ton of songs and then slowly start to figure out what it is that we're, that I'm trying to like say. Makes sense. I think, I think now I have like more, much more of an idea of what I want to say than ever before. Where I was kind of just writing songs and going with the moment or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, I want to write, I need to write something about this futuristic weird time and like this social isolation of the internet age and just all that kind of fun stuff. All right. Um, so you said you write all of the time. You said that the CP was kind of like written throughout the pandemic. Was there a point in the pandemic where like you lost those creative juices? Because like, I mean, you put out so much like yeah. during that pandemic time. Yeah, actually, it was kind of the opposite for me. I had like a sort of a creative block before the pandemic and I was feeling really burned out. We were touring like 200 shows a year and Jesus. it was awesome, but it was insane. And I was kind of tired, I think. And I think the pandemic was like kind of perfect to just get a chance to chill out for once. Um, 
so yeah i had a kind of a creative revolution i don't know i got into like new hobbies and shit that, that's know? good got got your got your well-deserved break <laughs> yeah and it just made me want to write more i feel i felt like i was more inspired than to uh connect with like music in a more personal way that's awesome sure awesome uh, so what song off this ep took the longest to write and which one is your personal favorite which uh ep or which, which song? song off the ep yeah oh uh yeah i think my personal favorite right now is uh this song called internet junkie mm-hmm. and that's a song that because i'm like obsessed with 90s grunge rock and you know into the 2000s just like i'm from seattle i love like nirvana and soundgarden and all that stuff on through to like deftones and whatever a lot of, a lot of that music was like inspired by heroin addiction and about heroin addiction it was like the heroin age mm-hmm. and uh so i wrote like the song internet junkie is just about being addicted to the internet and being like dependent on uh you know a constant stream of media so but i wrote it in like the style of like heroin music and mm-hmm. to me that's just like it's cool because it's both just aesthetically what I like, but it also applies in a weird way to the futurism thing that I'm trying to be interested in. Hell yeah. yeah. And uh, the song that took the longest off the EP. Took the longest. Good question. You usually write a song in like a day, always. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Yeah, I used to, when I when I first started writing, I would like spend two years to like finish a song and like tweak it and just got to the point where when we moved to LA, we signed a record deal and we would get like a day with a producer in a studio. And so you just kind of, we had, we were forced to just start and finish a song um, in that, with that time. And that's kind of just, I realized it's like a much better way to write, even if it comes out totally bad, um, it kind of just turn it out. And then, and then you have something, you know, and you can like tweak it or you can throw it away or you can pick out something. You can pick out the best ones. So these are all kind of written like that. These are all kind of written in a day. Okay. So like with your current writing process, you don't like harp over a song that like you just can't crack. You just kind of move on to the next idea. Yeah. I just can't anymore. Cause I like write too many songs. Probably mm-hmm. write like, I don't know, like 150 songs a year or something like that. That's fucking insane. Oh my God. Uh, like you don't hear them, you know, you don't hear most of them. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Oh my um, there's just like some that we all agree on are the best ones because there's what we put out yeah uh so what is your favorite lyric uh off the cp and what is it what does it mean to you my favorite lyric well um from that song internet junkie mm-hmm. i say um i'm getting dumber the more that i read thinner the more that i feed i always like saying that lyric <laughs> Uh, it's kind of just about like, you know, reading is supposed to make you smarter, but now we're all just kind of reading a lot of brain rot and scrolling the feed and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, just, it's like feeding on nutrientless food a lot of the time. Um, and it gets really depressing for me. So yeah, that, that's what it's about. All right. Good pick. Uh, so I guess you my favorite to... lyrics are often very depressing lyrics. That's fair. Fair enough. Those are usually the the best ones, yeah, because they're the most like emotional and raw ones. So it's completely valid. Yeah. Uh, so would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you're creating this EP? I know you went into it a little bit earlier, but if you could go a bit more in depth, that would be perfect. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of just like our second album was totally a breakup album, and I was writing. It's coming off a big breakup, and I was writing a lot of sad love songs about how love and romance is like this strangely beautiful and sad at the same time, all that stuff. Um, And I kind of like, you know, got through that and was sort of in a place where I wanted to just write about philosophy, kind of like I was in my head. It was the album was called Life, Death and Everything because I just wanted to write about like big topics like that. And so, yeah, I think that's kind of my headspace. I was doing a lot of psychedelics. Mm-hmm. I do mushrooms. I did DMT for the first time, Ooh. which is really crazy, by the way. I haven't even heard of that uh, until right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I do them rarely, you know, once every couple months or something, but not every day. But that's like 
been like a very interesting philosophy experiment. I don't know, man. Just wanted to write about like religion and the future and write a, what I really want to do is write a sci-fi novel. So I ended up just kind of thinking about that a lot, um, writing music. All right. Sure. And with those psychedelics, do you tend to write under the influence of them? Have you done that at all? And does that kind of affect how you write? Yeah, I've tried that and I've tried every kind of thing and, and that usually don't have a lot of success. I feel like the best formula for me is to write, to do psychedelics or to have a crazy experience, whatever it is, mm. and then write about it later, you know, mm-hmm. when I'm gotcha. clean and sober and I have some decaf, some half-calf <laughs> coffee in me. Half-calf, right. perfect. <laughs> and I'm like lucid enough to like write about it and do it justice. Mm-hmm. And then, it, cause if like, I don't know, some people I think they thrive on it, they write while they're high or they smoke weed or something. Yeah. But me, I'm just like, if I'm high on weed and I write and the song comes out, just like, wow, look at the leaves on the tree. <laughs> and you're just like, wow, okay. Some then crazy shit. Yeah. And then soberly later, I'm like, I don't really relate to this anymore. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. But um, I, will, if I, if I, I will kind of have to rein it in. Like if I'm doing like psychedelic drugs or like I, I take a trip and I do like acid or something, I can have like really profound experiences. Mm-hmm. Everyone can like very spiritual ones. And then. I write a song that's like too much, you know, it's like too, it's like Mm -hmm. just about how like, I don't know, we're all one, we're all connected and it gets like kind of like a little bit too like, like we get it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel like I'm trying to find ways to like take the lessons from it and let that creative explosion happen and then come back later and kind of like put it together into into a way that like makes sense to someone who's on it, you know? Okay. So when you are having those trips, you're kind of like mentally taking notes like, oh, this is this is really cool. I have to write about this. I have to try to remember to write something about this. Yeah, sometimes usually I'm just experiencing it, taking it in. Like, for example, like, I don't know, I tried DMT, which is like, you know, I only recommend people who really, really are okay with like a terrifying, crazy experience because it's like a 15 minute just crazy thrill ride roller coaster through the cosmos like you go out of body hmm. you have like this crazy experience so in that situation i'm not like taking notes at all hmm. i'm just kind of like beholding it yeah and then later i'm like well what does that mean i don't know like it comes with all these spiritual revelations you're having a new spiritual revelation every second and hmm. and uh yeah just kind of like to experience it and not think about music at all and then okay Later, when it's time to work, I'll know what to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. Um, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this EP for the first time? Should they do it in the car with friends, in dark with headphones on? Is the workout EP part of EP? What do you personally recommend? Hell yeah. Friends in the car is a good one. I think I discovered most of my favorite music in high school, like in the car with friends, like beating drum parts on the dashboard. Um, mm-hmm. To me, like, yeah, rock music is always best for either listening to by yourself like at home and like soaking it in mm-hmm. or like being with a small group of close friends and just like rocking out yeah as opposed to like a lot of me like dance music which is better for being at the club or going to a rave and like dancing and like being social i don't know a lot of rock music is like way more cerebral than that or it's like you know it's social it's fun it's crazy but in like a very like i'm with my two best friends kind of way and we're figuring out life you know what i mean Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I recently saw a tweet that was like somebody was like, I don't know why more people don't get together to listen to albums because like we get together to watch movies, but like nobody gets together to listen to records. Like they don't make time for it. So I appreciate like I appreciate when artists are like, uh-huh. you should get together with people that you know and love and like listen to my music that way. Because not enough people do oh, yeah. it. Yeah. I agree. Hell yeah. People used to do that back in the day when you had to buy a record and True. sit around it. Yeah, but now it's, it's like with this there's so much media that has you know music is just sound there's so much media now that has like 3d visuals and sound it's like no one wants to go to a movie theater and pay 20 bucks to just like listen to an album mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and and now it's just too convenient like i was gonna wait to listen to new water parks album on friday morning like in my car with the very nice speakers i was getting fomo scrolling on fucking twitter and listen to it on my phone speakers at midnight when it dropped like kind of ruining yeah. that first experience just because like i felt like i had to in that moment or else i was going to miss out you know right yeah. well that's cool you're, you're you're a true music listener then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. 
Uh, so a lot of people don't even have time for an album anymore. Yeah. Right. True. It's ridiculous. It's it's usually just uses like background noise now. Yeah. Yeah. And I get it because I, I like this too much interesting stuff for me to click on. Mm. So it's hard to like focus. I find this moments when I do have music and I slow down and just, just nothing but music and like my thoughts. And I'm like, I have a spiritual breakthrough. I'm like, oh yeah, this is what life is supposed to be. Mm. And then I forget again and I get lost in the sea of everything. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so this one should be super super quick off the top of your head i want you to describe this ep for new listeners in three words no more no less three words mm-hmm. oh my god that's why i wrote like five hundred thousand lyrics for it <laughs> <laughs> um well like i said before the whole time i was writing i was thinking life death and everything that's perfect if you add into that technology that's four words but that's mm-hmm. that's the album all right we'll take it Perfect. um so in that same train of thought is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through it yeah i want them to uh fall and collapse and fall on their knees and weep at the awesome power of, of the human experience and life i don't expect that every single one of them will do that um uh, but I really do believe in the power of music to like change people's minds and open Mm -hmm. people's hearts because it did that to me. So I guess all I can hope is to get that kind of, someone will get like that sort of rock and roll spiritual high that I got when I was first discovering all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's perfect. Uh, So can you talk about any particularly challenging or standout moments from the creation of this EP positive or negative? um hmm. challenging moments i don't know it was challenging to be in the pandemic because we come off of like five years of non-stop touring where we're constantly like seeing our fans and we're seeing this growth mm-hmm. of the band kind of face to face and it was really exciting and we get this like sort of instant feedback then all of a sudden it was kind of like just shouting into a void you know it's kind of like i don't know if anyone listens to this anymore i don't know if anyone cares uh, we don't know what the world's going to be like now that it's all it's all kind of settled you know we're all kind of used to it and figuring it out now but it's like back then it was like we don't know what we're doing we don't know if this is over people can never play live shows again so that was it on the one hand kind of weird on the other hand kind of like this awesome opportunity to like just be in creative isolation for years like i feel like we're, that's probably never going to happen again mm. Hopefully, I like figured out. Not. I like started learning coding and stuff. I'm like making video games now. I started like scoring classical music. I don't know. Oh my Just god! Like I, back, uh, yeah, that's like my passion project now. I'm about to release my first video game, which I'm really excited about. That's so fucking cool. I'm doing like crazy that's music awesome. for it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's for like VR. Oh my uh, god, VR! Is that cool. like is that connected to like your your music and the world that you've built with that, or is it something totally separate from what you're doing? It is connected. Yeah, it's just all part of this. I always had a pipe dream of making a video game, but now I'm kind of like getting into like VR and just like writing more about all this technology stuff and using AI. And so it's kind of part of that. And it's like a sci fi thing. And it's part of this, this sort of mental journey that I'm on. And like, you know, expanding into like, media of the future and of now and it's like, music doesn't have to be just music anymore. And I think there's a lot of new opportunities to create interesting stuff that hasn't been done because of things like VR and AI. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely all part of that. But yeah, so at the same time as the, the pandemic has been like this weird sort of transformation for everybody, this weird like sort of negative thing, but also kind of a crazy rare opportunity. Absolutely. So, for sure. Yeah. And it's crazy to hear that you guys almost i mean you you put out a ton of music during the pandemic as you said you were just you were just writing a lot of songs every day for the entire pandemic but then you said just now that you guys were kind of at a standstill because you were like well we don't have that instant feedback we aren't touring we don't see our fans you know almost every day but you guys thrived almost with with just all that extra time so it's just crazy seeing both sides of it in one band 
totally it's kind of cool that i mean we couldn't tour anymore so we couldn't we had like our first england tour plan i was about to go down i was really excited about that getting over the pond and stuff but yeah then we're just we're just stuck at home but honestly yeah to me it's like kind of a, a dream come true just to be like oh, i have time you know i can like try stuff and yeah absolutely now we're back to the rat race now, you know. So yeah, <laughs> get yeah. back out there. <laughs> um, so for this question, I want you to picture you're on tour. You had gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Oh, uh, pistachios. I'm obsessed with pistachios. That's solid. Oh, yeah. Salted or mm. unsalted? Salted. No, at one point on tour, I was eating so many nuts that I had to start buying unsalted. Oh. It was like my main source of sustenance. <laughs> And so I had to, it was too much salt. Yeah. There's something about the process of peeling a pistachio and it, ah, you finally get it. You earned it. And then mm -hmm. and so you, you get one of those sour ones. That kind of just fucks up the entire bag <laughs> yeah. for me personally. That's the thing. Like, it's like one in 20 pistachios is just like hell on earth. Yeah. I think they're getting better at that because I feel like it's less and less nowadays. It like might be. Those in the pistachio industry are cracking the code. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to ruin pistachios for you, but I haven't had one in like a year and a half, maybe because I found a worm in mine. Um, <laughs> and apparently that's what that's what makes the pistachio so sour. It's a larva in there. I'm sorry. Wow. So when you get a nasty pistachio, it's because you've just eaten a, a grub. Yeah. Well, nothing can ruin them for me, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, Thank God. Like, I'm so ruin sorry. This man's favorite I'm snack sorry. over here. <laughs> <laughs> I just I didn't want you to just be like, oh, okay, that's that's fine. But I'm glad I it think doesn't every, affect you. Every fruit and vegetable and everything that we eat is completely covered in like strange little worms and mites, and that's just it's just life. It's part of life, man. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen eyelash mites? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So this video, it's like, I zoom in on like an eyelash, and there's all these little tiny fucking spider crabs like thriving on your eyelash. Like, wow. Yeah. I, can't unsee that. It, yeah, no. it makes me sick to think about, honestly. <laughs> like that there's just little things crawling all over me at all times. I'm like, yeah, I don't like that shit. And I want to go <laughs> yeah, yeah. my eyes in hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. <laughs> Chop my eyelids off now. <laughs> uh. Mm -hmm. uh, so if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be and why? What dish would we be? Mm -hmm. uh, a late night hot pocket from a gas station. Oh. Really selling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh after a long drive from new york to phoenix sometimes that's the best thing to eat all right all we'll right. take it uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so for the last couple of questions we're going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death wait, row wait go back let me think about this food metaphor one more time okay. all right yeah yeah rewind because i have thought about that with music so i'm like thinking about like why is like the trashiest, most terrible shit music, often the most popular. Mm. And it's true, but it's like, same with food. It's like, you know, McDonald's French fries is like the most sellingest food in yeah. America. But like, I'm sure any chef thinks that that's not the best, like best type of food. Yeah. And then you have these chefs trying to make this really delicate, intricate cuisine. They spend their whole lives to build this perfect morsel of food. And then like, no one cares or it doesn't sell that well. It definitely doesn't sell as well as the French fries. Mm think of music like that <laughs> and i was trying to make music like but i like french fries you know mm -hmm. yeah. I, but i like it when you go to a bar where they do like elevated food that's like dank but also like elevated and then you get french fries but you get like also like mussels and sauce yeah but it's not like super super foody where you're trying to eat this bitter gross like stuff where it's like a drop of water on a giant plate like mm -hmm. not nah, try to be right in the middle you know with yeah music where it's like also delicious but also deep that 100%. that answer was so deep it just blew my mind <laughs> <laughs> totally totally just blew my mind on that question <laughs> and i'm the one that's supposed to ask you it <laughs> right. nice. there you go um so it's as i said uh for the last couple of questions we're going to shift completely away from music go straight to death row boom so if you're on death row what would your last meal be with a drink oh wow um Wow, good question. Death row, last meal. Tab of acid. An old fashioned. That's my favorite drink to drink. Mm -hmm. And uh it just have to be well, like I just said, you know, a, a really elevated, culinary, delicious cheeseburger. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> um yeah. What did I why why am I on death row? What did I do? 
just the most heinous crime you could think of is is what you did in this alternate universe though not not this one hopefully you dropped two yeah. banger of an album <laughs> almost That's too the good most heinous yeah. thing, yeah. <laughs> cause society to collapse yeah exactly <laughs> Then I would enjoy a burger. If I like, you know, murdered my whole family, I probably just wouldn't eat anything. You know? Yeah. What have yeah. I done? Why did I do that? Right. Oh my god. What was I thinking? Oh, magic. So, if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? If I could live in one fictional what? world. Fictional world. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm, amazing. Um. Fictional world. Well, I mean, that would probably just have to be like, there's a lot of like really scary fictional worlds that I love like watching, but I wouldn't want to be inside of. Yeah. Uh, like the Matrix or like, you know, any sort of medieval fantasy. Like, I love medieval fantasy, but I'm so glad I live in modern times where we have antibiotics and stuff. Yep. <laughs> and like body wash. Yep. Um, but like fictional worlds are like, I don't know, like the one from Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Mm. Okay. The one from uh, All You Need Is Love by the Beatles. Mm -hmm. Psychedelic acid utopian fantasies where everyone's friends and there's just beautiful marmalade in the sky and everyone's just hanging out by the river and uh, life's good. Hell yeah. Do you ever have a dream? Do you ever have a dream that's just like magically wonderful? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you wake up and you're like, what the fuck? Like, I have... I have to go to work today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Usually I have, like, ang anxiety, normal anxiety dreams where you're, like, trapped in a subway or something. But then, like, every once in a while I'll just have a dream where, like, everyone I've ever loved is there. Mm -hmm. And we're in this, like, we're getting on a boat to, like, go off into the sunset together. And we're just like, oh, this is, I mean, it's like a fun party. And it's like... And I just wake up and I'm like, wow, that's insane yeah yeah and inspiring and i want to like try to create that somehow oh Hell yeah. yeah all right but i can't oh. not yet i mean maybe with the with, the, adva time. with the advancement with of AI, ai who knows yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> um so awesome. i had them i'm asking the last question every single person that we've spoken to have said that it is the most important question what's your favorite color favorite color mm -hmm. uh Red. Nice. No, it changes changes every day. Mm -hmm. uh, it changes every day. My favorite is the uh, movie Ex Machina. He's talking to a robot who's conscious. Yeah. And she asks him what his favorite color is, and he says, like, blue. And she's like, you're lying. I can, I can always tell when you're lying. And he says, like, I'm, am I am I lying? He's like, okay. The answer is then, seeing as that I'm not six years old, I don't have a favorite color. <laughs> she says, now you're not lying. <laughs> <laughs> honestly that's fair enough mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> every color is so beautiful and i don't want to lose any of them yeah yeah there's yeah. a type of lobster shrimp that can see like a hundred thousand more colors than we can or something like yeah. that lucky bastards i, I want to see those so bad colors. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so as i said that's all the questions we have today is there anything that you would like to plug no that's it man go listen to wallow in at ep uh look out for if you're interested in VR and video games, my video game is going to come out soon. Free demo. Check it out. It's called Battletronica. It's a very nerdy, heady sci-fi tale with crazy industrial techno music. Uh, beyond that, we're going to go on tour with Robert DeLong, uh, who's an amazing artist and friend, uh, in May, May and June, all U.S. tours. So come see us. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for now. This has been Nick from Dreamers, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.